Hey guys, this is the second word that I received from the Lord on uh, December 20th, 2014. The title of this word is A Great Army is Gathering. Um, we know that the Lord is doing a lot of different things. The Bible says that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. We know that there are right now armies that's rising up all over the earth, human armies. And I know that the Lord is going to use armies, even wicked armies, just like he did to discipline Israel. He used the Babylonian army during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar II, um, the Babylonian captivity. The Lord used this army to bring judgment to his people, to bring discipline, to bring correction, and to bring righteousness to his people. And yes, the Lord is going to be doing that in these last days. We know that God is in control. He is in control. And the Lord has told me, and we know that this is true, that he is going to use evil to destroy evil in some cases. He's going to have, uh, you know, uh, we see that in the Bible where he would send confusion into the enemy's camp and the enemy would destroy the enemy. Well, he's going to be doing such things as that also in these last days in a major way. He is going to, in a great part, use evil to just actually to destroy themselves, to destroy each other. And, uh, and when I say that, I do mean um, the spiritual realm demonic, the demonic spiritual realm, actual demons, and Satan himself, and, uh, and also Satan's human army, those who choose him, willingly choose him uh, to be their Lord, to be their master. Um, but in this particular word, the Lord is talking about his human army. Um, and we know that we are going to be a huge part of what God does in these last days to destroy the works of darkness. That's what the Lord came to do, was to destroy the works of darkness. And, and, um, and that's what this word is about, even though I'm sure there's other implications, there's other things in it. Um, but he is addressing his human army. And I'm going to read it, and then I'm also going to read some scriptures to, uh, to go along with it. Okay, it says, um, A great army is gathering. The world does not know you. It cannot see you. A mighty army is rising to destroy the works of darkness. My children, do not be afraid. I am in control. I have many secret weapons. I have many called by my name that have not bowed their knee to the enemy. The world does not see your rising, but your enemy does. He trembles at your rising. He knows full well the power within you to annihilate his kingdom. You are not alone. I shall do great exploits through you. My kiss is upon you. My aroma surrounds you. My beautiful ones, my glory rises from within you. My judgments shall be executed in all the earth for both good and evil. I am the righteous judge. I see all, I know all, who can hide from me. Can anyone work righteousness or evil without my knowledge? I will overturn the plans of the wicked. I will lay all things bare for all to see. I will make myself known. Every eye will see, every... Um, Everyone will know that I am the righteous judge. I shall execute judgment through my army. The powers of darkness shall be turned upon their own heads. All who desire freedom shall be free. Praise the Lord. The earth shall tremble as my mighty army rises to execute judgment against the darkness. My mighty ones, you are not alone. All the power of my kingdom is with you. The power of my kingdom is in you. 
rest in me, trust my timing, I open and close doors, I will make a way where there seems to be no way. Do not put your trust in man, but trust in me. I will make your footsteps sure. I am the light that lights your footsteps. My kingdom comes, my will shall be done. Praise the Lord. Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us, that you are with us. Lord, that you have always worked through your people, but Lord, you're going to work through your people in these last days in ways that we cannot even begin to wrap our brain around completely, Lord. But Lord, help us to. Lord, help us to understand your ways and to walk in your ways, Lord. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you. Lord, we, we are not worried, Lord. We know that you are in control of all things, no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we feel. Lord, our trust is in you, not in the things of this world. Lord, not in guns. Not in our government. Not in our military. But Lord, it's in you. And it's in our faith is in your ways. So, Lord, we just, we praise you. We love you. Establish your army. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Okay. I'm going to read some scriptures. Guys, we know that the kingdoms of this world are coming down. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. And it's going to continue. The shaking is going to continue until nothing is left standing but the kingdom of our God. Amen. And uh, he, the Lord doesn't want us to be afraid because we're standing upon the rock. We're standing upon and in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So all we have to do is keep our eyes on the Lord, trust him, do what he tells us to do when he tells us to do it. Don't let little things distract us. Stay focused. Amen. Keep joy in our hearts. His kingdom is one of righteousness, peace, and joy. Great joy. We're going to experience sadness, but we're going to experience amazing joy. Amazing joy as we see God's kingdom come in a greater measure. We're going to be filled with such joy. Guys, we are a part of God's army, and we are harvesters, and we'll see that in this scripture. I'm going to go ahead and just read some scriptures. I've read these before, uh, but there's new people to my channel, and uh, there'll always be new people coming and listening, and uh, these are important scriptures that helps us to know who we are, the authority that we have through God, and, uh, and our part, our part in, in, uh, in God's kingdom and in his plans. Okay, Matthew 7, uh, 10, 7 and 8. I, I believe all of these are out of the modern King James Version. This is where Jesus sent out the 12 to do his work. We know that Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness and he commissioned us to do the same. Amen. And we're going to see those scriptures here. Okay, Matthew 10, 7 through 8. And it says, and as you go, proclaim saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. You have freely, you have received freely, freely give. Amen. That was to the twelve. Then he sent out seventy more. And he sent, uh, we're going to read that in Luke 10, 1 and 2. And it says, And after these things the Lord appointed seventy others, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he was about to come. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest, and he may send forth laborers into his harvest. That's what they were doing then. They were harvesting, right? He was, so that's what they were doing by doing the works of God. They were destroying the works of darkness, and they were harvesting. And the Lord sent out 12, then he sent out 70, and he told the 70, he said, pray that the Lord of the harvest may send forth laborers into his harvest field. So it did not end there. It didn't end 
right there with that 70. We know that. He said, pray that the Lord would send out, the Lord of the harvest would send out laborers, many laborers into the field. Okay, I'm going to jump down in chapter 10 a little bit to, let's see, it's Luke 10, 17 through 20. And it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. It happened then. It's been happening all through history. It's going to happen even greater when we... It's symbolic. Satan hasn't completely fell yet, but every time we do the works of darkness, we're to, we, I mean, every time we destroy the works of darkness, every time we do the works of God, he is falling. He is falling. Okay. It's just that we haven't done it enough, have we? We haven't done it. The church hasn't done what God has called us to do. We've done some things. We've done good. To, to to a small degree, you know, a lot of people have been saved throughout history and uh, there's been periods and uh, of, you know, when the church was more powerful and there's been times when the church was much weaker than it is right now. But listen, we're in the season. We're in the season of wrapping up things and there's going to be a lot, a lot of this. He's calling his army together in power, in great power, Okay. Picking up in 19, Behold, I give to you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the authority of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I found that to be true. I've gone head to head with many demons, many strong ones. Cast them out. I was not hurt. The person, people that I've cast them out of, we're not hurt. Our ministry does that in faith. Never back down from it. Welcome the opportunity as much as, you know, we have time to do that. It's just one of the works of God. It's not a big deal. We're all supposed to be doing it. But yes, you know, get some learning first, okay? <laughs> and make sure that you're born again. We've talked about that stuff before. Make sure that, I mean, you know, if you're born again, you know, uh, the sons of Scevia, they went out and they tried to, you know, cast out devils because they saw the disciples doing it. And, well, they got their hindies handed to them. Uh, so, so uh, know, know who you belong to and do it in his name and his authority. Not with pride, but do it because he told us to do it because we're commanded to do it when the Lord opens the door and gives you that opportunity. Okay, verse 20. Yet do not rejoice in this, that the evil spirits are subject to you. Rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Okay, I'm going to also read in Mark 16, 15 through 20. You know, this is the commission to all of us, all who believe. Just to go ahead and show you one more time that it didn't stop with the 70, that it continued Okay, it says, And he said to them, Go into all the world, proclaim the gospel to all the creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned, and miraculous signs will follow to those believing these things. To those believing these things. Do you believe? In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any, any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will be well. And in, then indeed, after speaking to them, the Lord was taken up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And going out, they proclaimed everywhere the Lord working with them. He is with us. His angels are with us to do these works. The Lord working with them and confirming the word. Confirming the word. Amen. By miraculous signs following. Amen. Amen. The Lord works with us and he confirms his word with miracles, with miraculous signs. Guys, the end time army of God is going to walk in tremendous power. It's already happening. The army is rising. Many are beginning to walk in power. 
but it's going to increase. It's going to increase. Okay, I'm going to read John 14, 12 through 14. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes on me, do we believe on him? Yeah, of course we do. The works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these he shall do. Because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have that promise. We have that promise. We just have to, guys, we've got to get our minds off ourselves. How anointed we are or are not. Because it's not us, it's him. It's by faith. Everything in the kingdom is by faith. So we just do it believing. And if we pray for somebody and they don't get healed, we keep praying. We keep believing. And we will see miracles. And there's sometimes we somebody won't be healed. You guys know that we're still struggling with an illness that my husband has. And my husband is a very anointed man. And when I say that, you know, God has used him much in healing, in prophecy, in words of knowledge, in visions. He don't have dreams much. If he does, they are prophetic. He don't have many, but if he does, they're prophetic because he just don't have many. But uh, the Lord has used him powerfully. So, you know... We don't understand everything, but we keep on keeping on doing what God has told us to do, what he's called us to do. And we leave, you know, we leave things in his hands when it don't, you know, when a healing don't manifest. And we leave that in his hand, but we keep on praying. We keep on believing. And we keep seeing people healed. And then, yes, there'll be some that's not. But I know that, I know that a time is coming soon. Soon, as the revelation keep, continues to come to us, that we are going to walk in a much greater power as we take our eyes off ourselves, really, as, and uh, just completely put our trust and our faith in the Lord and let Him flow through us more and more. Because it's not about us, guys. It's about Him, and it's about His work. It's about setting the captive free. Because trust me, when you're set free, from a sickness, a disease, mental uh, demon torment, mental torment, mental illness, that is destroying the works of darkness. That is setting the captive free, and that's the army of God, guys. We don't go around with guns and swords and you know whatever bombs. We don't do that. We go with the love and the power of God. We're freedom fighters, but we do it with words. Amen. We do it with words, words filled with faith, God's words. We speak God's words and we do it in faith. And when we do, it releases the angels of God who were working with us to go and to do the things that we are speaking in faith. When we declare and we speak, because we don't just, when we pray, we don't just ask. We also declare, you know, we're led by the Holy Spirit how to pray. All right. I think that's all the scriptures that I have. I guess that's it. That's all that I wanted to say about this right now. But, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, if you are stepping out and you are doing the works, you know, and you're not seeing everything that you want to see, just keep it on. Just keep on. Keep on doing what you feel like God wants you to do. Stay in his time and he will give you opportunities. And guys, there's all kinds of ways of destroying the works of darkness. Not just these. Just showing people love. Helping people when they need help. If they're, you know, sad, depressed. If they're in poverty. You know, to be able to help them financially or just whatever that we can do to show the love of God and to tell people that Jesus loves them and that he died on the cross for them. Salvation is the greatest thing. It's the greatest gift. And that is rescuing them from darkness. That's that's the main one. You know, setting them free from sickness and all these other things. But it, uh, the greatest, the greatest way that we can set people free is to lead them to Christ. Salvation. 
Well, guys, that's all I have for right now. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.